Today we're going to learn how to do this. How long of a bridge can you currently make? Bridging is one of those techniques that sets 3D pens apart. It's pretty amazing that they can be used to make features like this. And because 3D pens are portable, you can use bridging pretty much anywhere. Try doing this with a glue gun or making these types of structures out of only clay. I was actually surprised that the glue gun lines didn't break, but they sag like crazy and aren't rigid at all. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over my tips and tricks for successful bridging and also give you some nice ways you can practice to improve your skills. I'd say bridging is an intermediate technique. If you're a total beginner, I'd recommend checking out some of my other tutorials first. Or not, you do you. Bridging means 3D penning from one surface to another completely through the air. Said another way, it means the filament you are penning is unsupported and has nothing underneath it. A tricky distinction is drawing into the air versus bridging. Drawing into the air is penning from one surface and then stopping in mid-air, not drawing between two fixed surfaces like bridging. Now we can talk about some of the most important factors to successful bridging. The first one is that bridging shorter distances is way easier than bridging longer ones. Always try to make the distance you're bridging as short as possible. Also, if you can add a surface or edge that splits a large span, it will make your bridging much easier. One thing that 3D pen users, myself included, often forget is that hot plastic that has just been extruded can stretch a ton. And a lot of bridging is just controlling that stretching. Keep in mind that if you have the wrong temperature settings, it can really mess things up. If the temperature is too hot, the plastic will become super stretchy and difficult to control. Here the temperature is set way too high, and you can see that at a normal bridging hand speed, the filament stretches a lot more. So what else can you do to keep the stretching under control? Well, you have a number of options. The first is fine tuning your hand speed. Move too fast and this happens. You have to find the hand speed that is just right because if you move too slow, you get major sagging like this. The next option I'm gonna talk about was one of the keys to greatly improving my bridging. So wake up. That key is that you have to release the extrude button before reaching the end of your bridge. This is a little tricky to show. So for the next clip, the pen sound is gonna be on. So pay attention to that. You can see I released the extrude button about halfway. The rest of the way, the filament's just stretching. The final option is to just use your other hand, pull the line tight, and then secure it. Don't forget to pause and let your lines cool. If you pen over it too quickly, it will sag badly. In terms of attachment at the start and end of your bridge, the surface you're penning on makes a big difference. Coarse and rough are great to anchor to, but filament doesn't stick very well to smooth surfaces. This also brings up the point that anchoring is super important to holding the start and ends of your bridge in place. Here I'm showing anchoring on four different surfaces. You can see that when I get to the metal, the filament has a really hard time sticking to the smooth surface. Remember, PLA sticks really well to itself, so you can make a full perimeter or line of PLA to anchor from. Now that we've covered the basics, let's talk about some other tips that can help make your bridging successful. My first tip is to cross the mesh you're making in two different directions. Here I've only bridged in one direction and you can see how flimsy it is. If I add lines in the other direction, the result is stronger and more stable. And this is with relatively few lines. The more lines you add, the stronger it'll be. If you're having trouble with sagging, you can take a pencil or a piece of cardboard to help support your lines in the center as you're making them. This tip may seem very obvious, but learning how the specific pen that you own performs while bridging is very helpful. Different pens have different speed settings and retraction rates. These all have an impact on the bridging lines that you'll end up making. So when to release the extrude button will be very different for different pens. Let's end by talking about some different ways you can practice your bridging. Cause you know, practice makes perfect. The easiest way to practice and a good starting point is to use paper cups. They have a nice small opening and allow you to really get a feel for how your pen bridges. You can also move from small cups to larger ones to slowly increase the difficulty. 
If you want to make things easier for yourself, you can put blue painter's tape around the perimeter to make sure the filament sticks really well. As you improve, another great way to practice is to use different size cardboard boxes. Filament sticks well to cardboard and they have a nice opening that you can bridge over. If you want to change up the surface and use something more challenging, rocks are a nice cheap way to do that. It may surprise you how poorly filament sticks to rocks. I had to make some lines of PLA to anchor to. To increase difficulty, just keep moving things farther and farther apart. If you get to really large spans, you can just bridge between two separate boxes. In the video thumbnail, I asked the question, which of these three is bridging? Hopefully this tutorial has taught you that the answer is this one. And another 3D pen tutorial comes to a close. I have lots of other tutorials and new techniques on my channel, so be sure to check out those videos if you're interested. Did you see it? Well, looky here. Here's a playlist of all those tutorials I just mentioned. I'd ask you to subscribe, but if you haven't by this point, you're probably not going to. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.